Sounds good. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm glad to be here. I almost wasn't. So uh, I apologize if there's any confusion. I actually um, just got back from Florida. My uncle passed away yesterday. So we have been holding a vigil with him for days. And I got back last night and I'm here with you today. So if I am not as hyperactive as normal <laughs> or look a bit more tired, I apologize for that. But I promise I will uh, teach you a lot of good stuff today. And I appreciate all of you guys who are here to learn and to take this knowledge to help yourself and hopefully other people that you love. Hey to my smoothie shredders out there. I already saw in the in the chat, those of you who are already cheering me on, thank you. And I appreciate your condolences. Um, but what better time to talk about health and life than when we lose someone that we love? Oh, I'll also apologize for being more emotional today, <laughs> which is saying a lot because I'm very emotional for those of you who already know me. So let me tell you a bit about why I'm hanging out here. Um, before I became a best-selling author and all the stuff that they, you just heard about me, um, I lived as a patient for much of my life. Um, by the age of 16 years old, I was already dealing with chronic illness. I had arthritis. I had rashes. Um, I had migraines. I had brain fog. I just, it was, it was very, it was getting harder and harder to just function normally. And I went to the doctor. I went, my mom is, she took me to the doctor over and over again. And, you know, they would try to figure out what was wrong, but couldn't really figure it out. They did MRIs for the migraines. You know, I took medicines for pain. But one day, after spending the day in the sun and coming home vomiting from a migraine, my rash on my face, super bright. They took me to the emergency room and my doctor met us there. And finally, she was able to put it together. And I was diagnosed with a disease called lupus. Um, it is actually Lupus Awareness Month. I'm wearing my purple. <laughs> uh, May is Lupus Awareness Month. So it's extra special to get to talk to you about this today as well for that reason, because I want to bring attention not just to the disease, but to what we can do about it. So lupus is an autoimmune disease and autoimmune diseases are diseases in which someone gets so sick that the immune system that is supposed to protect us from viruses, from bacteria, from injuries, actually starts to attack our own body, our own cells. And it can attack any organ of the body. But when I was in the hospital getting diagnosed, they found out from my blood tests and later from a biopsy that I was also in kidney failure. And literally my immune system was attacking my kidney as if it were an invading organism of some kind. And lupus is actually a lot more common than people think. When I was 16, so I'm going to give away my age, that was 30 years ago. <laughs> it's exactly 30 years ago from when I was diagnosed. And uh, back then they thought it was pretty rare, especially in my age, but it has gotten more and more common. Currently, lupus is among the top 20 causes of death in women. And it's among the top five causes of death for young women of color. So it is a serious disease that we need to really uh, take seriously and be aware of and be able to talk about. So I am glad to be able to share that. For me, I was very sick by 16 years old and I had a very straightforward nephrologist. We had my kidney biopsy and, uh, and the next day after that, we're in the nephrologist's office and it was my mother and my grandmother. And those of you who listen to me know my grandmother is my favorite person in the world. And she's a Holocaust survivor and one of the toughest people you ever meet or you could have ever met. Uh, she lived to 99, but I still miss her every day. But she was just, I never saw her cry. She was so tough. And the only day I've ever seen her cry was this day when we went to the nephrologist's office and he told us that I was uh, in stage four kidney failure. And if they didn't do something aggressive, like experimental treatments, that at best I had six months to live. At, and uh, unless we ended up on dialysis, dialysis and transplant would be my only hope to survive after six months. So <clears throat> it was a really tough time, you know, for my family. And I remember that night going home and seeing my grandmother. And she was on her knees, just begging God, crying, just please take me and spare her. And, you know, I, I tell the story because I think it's important 
for people to realize how you don't go through health, through sickness alone. The people who love you suffer with you. And people with lupus, people with other diseases, you know, the people who love you are sick with you and scared for you. And so it was very hard. Now, I'm going to give away the ending and let you know I made it. So for those of you who are crying along with me, I did make it, but it was hard. I did the experimental treatments, which included two years of chemotherapy. And uh, at the time they were experimenting with it. Now it's a commonly used medication. And the reason they use chemotherapy is because the side effect of chemotherapy is that it shuts down your immune system. We used it typically for cancer, still do, but the side effect is that the immune system can stop working altogether. And so if your immune system is currently killing you by attacking your kidney or other organs, then shutting it down seems like the best option. Now, some of you might already go, but that down, that also sounds dangerous. Absolutely it is. And it's one of the reasons why people with lupus um, often struggle with infections for two reasons, really. One is if your immune system is too busy attacking the wrong things, it misses the important things. So people with autoimmune disease tend to also have poor immunity when it comes to infections and other things. And I remember that clearly. Somebody got a cold and was better in a week. I'd be with pneumonia for two months. I had a sinus infection that once lasted six months, right? So on the one hand, your immune system is killing you. On the other hand, it's not doing its job. And then on top of that, the medicines we use for autoimmune disease suppress your immune system. So you can imagine how terrified people with autoimmune disease were during the pandemic, even more than everybody else probably, um, because it was so scary to imagine that there could be one more infection they may not come back from. So it's hard. Uh, and so from 16 to 18 years old, I took seven different medications every day, high dose steroids, um, medicines for the side effects of the steroids. I took chemotherapy. Uh, they put me on um, hormone suppression to stop puberty because they knew that the chemotherapy could cause uh, cancer and, and infertility um, and affect my ovaries. So I, I was I was on a lot of medicine every day. And my job was to finish high school. And keeping a job, keeping a purpose, keeping a focus is one of the best ways that I survived. And that's something that I teach my patients and clients every day is that you have to hold on to your purpose, your life. Because if you don't have something else to focus on, your whole life becomes your illness. And you can't let that happen. I wear purple to bring awareness to a disease, not because I choose the identity of the disease. It's an important distinction. And so my family didn't allow me to choose identity as a sick person. Lupus was just something I had, but it wasn't who I was. And I had stuff to do. So there was never a discussion about putting pause on school or anything like that. And again, my family were refugees from the Holocaust. They lived way harder lives than I did. So I actually still grew up, even through my illness, feeling very grateful and lucky. Because I was safe. I was free. I had family. I had medical care. So I was still lucky compared to my family members who perished in the war or even the ones who survived it and, and suffered. So maintaining that, that outlook of being lucky and grateful and maintaining purpose and focus that I had stuff to do. Now I was aware, which, you know, most teenagers aren't that life is limited. And so I was aware that I wouldn't live as long a life as other people considering my illness, uh, I became aware that I wouldn't be able to have children. Um, I knew that I would become disabled at some point, but I figured I will just live my life at a bigger level. I will live more life in whatever time I have than most people live in a hundred years. So I was aggressively interested and passionate about life. I read my textbooks front to back. <laughs> I love science. Um, and uh, I graduated in the top 10 of my class in spite of all of the illnesses. Didn't get to number one, but maybe if it wasn't for the chemo, I won't blame the chemo. <laughs> but I did get a scholarship to my dream college, Carnegie Mellon. Um, I did genetic research there. And I 
even that, you know, by the time I got to college, so two weeks before I started college, I had my last chemotherapy. And uh, I was so excited to be done with the chemo and just be with the pills and that I survived it. And when I finished the chemotherapy, they actually, um, they, they said I was in remission for my kidneys and to be in remission for your kidneys or even in remission for lupus does not mean that you don't have lupus. It means that lupus is not currently killing you. So I still took medicine. Uh, I took medicine for my migraines. I took medicine for my joint pain. I took my, my steroids, thankfully at a lower dose than, than what I had to take uh, when my kidneys were failing. But I took blood tests every month and they still showed that I had lupus. There's antibodies for lupus. I still had protein in my urine, which they said was caused by the damage to my kidneys. And I was told I would have that forever, but I was alive and I was able to go to school and even doing clinical research. They told me, nope, you can't do that until you're a junior. Well, summer after freshman year, I just would not stop knocking on the doors to the labs until somebody let me in and gave me a test tube to work with. Uh, life's short and I don't take no. <laughs> So, uh, so that was really how I, how I chose to do this was to say, okay, I have these issues. There might be a clock ticking on my life and I'm just going to love and learn and get everything I can from this life. Now, um, when I decided to go to medical school, my health took a turn for the worse and I had a relapse, um, not of my kidney failure, but now I had new antibodies that actually cause blood clots. They're called antiphospholipid antibodies, for those of you who know about that. And those started causing double vision. So it causes blood clots and the blood clots started traveling throughout my body and I had dots all over my skin from them. And then I started getting double vision. And I remember trying to round in the hospital and my world was split into two and I would just hold a wall until the world came back into one. And then I'd see the next patient. I was probably sicker than a lot of the patients there. I was diagnosed with having TIAs or, or mini strokes and then put on injectable blood thinners. And even at that point with the injectable blood thinners, um, they told me, you know, listen, this is worse. And you really need to understand that you cannot get pregnant ever. One, the uh, between the blood clots, you're probably going to miscarry anyway. If you do have a baby, you're putting your life at risk. You could have a stroke um, and the baby itself could be sick. So you can have something called neonatal lupus where the baby actually gets attacked as well. And I knew I was also accelerating towards disability, but I was almost ready to graduate. I got my first choice of residency out at UCLA Harbor. And I just decided, well, I was lucky once again. And so I, the way I thought about myself, other people would say, oh, you're so unlucky. You keep getting sick. I thought I'm the luckiest person in the world because no matter how sick I get, I always come back. Oh, there's a medicine for that. There's a medicine for that. And so that is why, even though I'm here to speak about health and wellness, I am not anti-medicine because I would be dead without medicine. And my doctor saved my life over and over again. And it's why I wear the white coat today is because of what they did for me. But as much as medicine saved my life, they never made me well. Wellness came at the same time that other things came for me. So I'm going to share my slides with here. And here we go. Share my screen for you. Here we go. So first of all, I did graduate medical school. And that is me there. You can, for those of you who are uh, aware of steroids, you can see the, how I had the big round face that you get from taking steroids. But I did graduate and here's my Holocaust survivor grandma right there and she got to be a part of it. But when things really changed was actually when I fell in love. <laughs> I fell in love, oops, let me get back here. This is Thomas Tadlock. Those of you who know him know that this little fringe of hair is no longer there, but <laughs> he's even cuter without it. Um, I met my husband, Thomas Tadlock back in 2004 and we fell in love right away. And he wanted to, marry me in spite of my illness. And I remember telling him, remember when, when he was talking about marrying me and I said, you know, I have this chronic disease, I'm going to become disabled and you're going to have to take care of me uh, before I die younger than you. And I'll never be able to have your children. And he just said, you know, I just, I'd rather live a short life with you than a lifetime with anybody else. And said, okay, well then let's get married. Cause I'm not going to turn away love. Like I said, I was going after life full on. And that's another lesson for you. You know, a lot of folks tell me they feel guilty or feel bad for their spouse or their partner 
because they have to live with someone who's sick. And I always say, don't, don't push away love. People have a choice. Let them love you if they want you. Uh, and he wanted to. Now, my husband, those of you who know who he is, he himself is a scientist. We, he went to Carnegie Mellon as well, and he has a master's degree in exercise science and health promotion. And his obsession when he was going after his degree is he wanted to understand human metabolism. He wanted to know how to help every person be able to lose fat or build muscle easily. He didn't understand why uh, there would be a problem where some people just can't gain weight and some people just can't lose weight and some people do it more easily. And he thought there must be an answer. And he actually is, um, he's a best-selling author himself, a book called Miracle Metabolism. So he was after the solution for metabolism, mostly for aesthetics, for, for weightlifting, bodybuilding. And since we were getting married and we were going to get married in Hawaii with just our closest friends and family members, um, he, I wanted to try his his ideas out. You know, I, at this point, at this point, I'd been uh, finishing up my, my medical work and I was about to go start my residency in Los Angeles. And if you want to be on the absolute best diet for gaining weight and being sick, I've got to get, recommend hospital food. Hospital food is some of the worst stuff you can ever eat. It's good for hospital business. Uh, it's really bad for you. Unless you're in New York, New York city now has plant-based menus as their primary menu at hospitals. But other than that, no. So I was overweight and I really, really wanted to lose weight. And I had actually been exercising, but it wasn't really working for me. So I asked him to put me on a diet and I'm going to go through all the components of the diet in a little bit with you. But his, I, he, what he had found was, and he would ask his professors, he would say, Hey guys, you know, what is the optimal diet for humans and metabolism? And his professors, PhDs didn't know. One would say high protein, low protein, high carb, low carb. You guys have probably heard all this before. And he would get so frustrated because he actually came from a background of computer science and math. Computer science and math, there is a solution. And if you put the right information in, you get the right output, right? Input, output, that's what it is. And yet when he entered the world of biology, there was no logic anymore. There was no, oh, here's what you input to get that output. It's like human beings have forgotten our own species diet, right? Everybody else, every other, when you ask a human or a scientist, what other species are supposed to eat? We know the answer to that. We can tell you what a hippopotamus eats, what a lion eats, what a rabbit eats, but ask a scientist what humans are supposed to eat and you will not get the same answer. So it was very frustrating for him. He said, this is not science. And so he started looking at cellular biology and talking to scientists who studied cellular biology in terms of uh, supplements and uh, nutrition. And what he found was there were certain things that are necessary for cellular function and cellular repair and cellular communication, which would all be involved in wanting someone to have fat loss or muscle gain. And some of that was high amounts of vitamins and minerals. A uh, highest dosage of that comes from things like cruciferous vegetables. Uh, you needed the right amount of omega-3 fatty acids. You needed a significant amount of water intake. And he thought those are the things that are missing for most people. And so he started creating protocols, hyperdosing people in that. Now at the time, he also was giving people um, meat because he thought then that it was necessary for muscle building. And it was, he was trying to choose the healthiest version of it. So it was like free range. Uh, and you might think, huh, this sounds kind of familiar. It sounds kind of like paleo. Well, before the whole paleo idea came out, that's what he was teaching. Now, I had been a vegetarian since I was a kid. My family read John Robbins' book, Diet for a New America, when I in the 80s. And so we were vegetarian, but I ate eggs and dairy and processed food every single day. So I was not a healthy person. In fact, my parents had pizza places, and I ate that every day growing up in high school. So I was overweight, I was sick, and I was eating a highly processed, fatty uh, vegetarian diet. So he said, listen, you want to slim down. He said, first of all, you're already beautiful. You don't have to lose any weight. He wanted to make sure he was safe. <laughs> but he said, if you want to lose fat, you're going to have to stop eating all the saturated fat. He's like all the eggs, all the cheese. I was a cheese addict. Um, all that's got to go. And he goes, if you're not going to eat meat, I don't know, let's try tofu or edamame. He'd never even met a vegetarian before, especially Pittsburgh. Right. So, so I went on the first version of his diet that ever had been without meat. And just like all those other clients, I was able to lose weight. I'll actually show you. Um, here we go. 
So that was me before. And, you know, I wasn't obese, but I wasn't happy with my weight. And I was a size 11, I think at the time. And that's just a buddy of ours. He, it's okay. Tom knows about him. Um, and I did his plan and I worked out and I ate the diet that he gave me. And within what I noticed was a few things. Uh, one, I immediately had way more energy. I was now an intern working at the hospital, working 30 hour shifts, multiple days a week. I had tons of energy. My joint pain went away. I felt really, really good. I got the goal I wanted. This is three months later when we went to get married. That's us in Hawaii uh, in Twin Falls. And uh, very, very happy and excited. We got married the next day. So uh, I lost all the weight. I went from a size 11 to a size three. Um, but more importantly to me was I felt so amazing. And uh, here we are at our wedding. Uh, we both cried through the whole thing. <laughs> We're both super emotional people. But what was really cool was right before we left for the wedding, I went to get my labs drawn and I hadn't had my labs drawn for a few months because the rheumatologist that I'd hired in California had retired. So I normally, I was so sick for much of my life that my doctors always took lab tests every single month. Um, but it was about four months or so that I hadn't had any labs. No. Okay. No, I think it was three months, three, three months. I hadn't had any labs. Previous labs were still positive. I still had protein in my urine. I still had positive lupus labs, ANA, DSDNA, for those of you who follow those labs. Um, went to get my labs right before the wedding and all of those lab tests were normal. They were negative. For the first time in my life since I'd been diagnosed, at this time, I'd been sick with lupus for 12 years straight, 12 years uh, through kidney problems, through blood clots. And this was the first time at 28 years old, it was the first time since before I was 16 that I had negative labs and I had zero symptoms. We didn't know why. My doctors didn't know why. Actually, they thought it was a lab mistake. So they had me retested a month later and they were still negative. Um, and I can tell you right now that this October will be 18 years that I've had negative tests for lupus and I have never had a relapse. In 18 years, it'll be August. So over 17 years, I've never had a relapse. So none of us knew what happened. And I was a new doctor. So I never thought it had anything to do with my diet. So any of you guys who have doctors who don't believe you, just give them time because it was my own body. And I was healthy for the first time in 12 years. I mean, not even protein in my urine. My kidneys healed after 12 years. And we couldn't figure out what happened. Was it love? Although I was in love with him for a year and a half before we got married and I still had lupus, <laughs> we didn't know. So I just kept doing what felt good for me. I just kept eating away, take care of myself and I didn't have any relapse. And so finally I did something, well, we did something that was against medical advice because I felt that I was healthy and I wanted to try. And we decided that we wanted to go ahead and get pregnant. Actually, my husband was terrified. He really wanted to adopt or surrogate. My mom wanted to be my surrogate. Um, but I knew that I was healthy. My labs showed I was healthy. And, you know, even when I got pregnant, they wanted me to go back on medications to keep me safe during the pregnancy. But I actually recently found lab tests that they did while I was um, from right previously before and while I was pregnant. And I'll show you, I have some of these. It might be hard to read, but this is 2004. So that was right before I changed my diet. And these are the blood clot antibodies that are high as lupus antibodies that are high. Um, and then this is me pregnant, all negative clotting antibodies, nothing. And then I'm sorry, it's, it's kind of hard to read, but this is the old days when it was not electronic, it's all paper. <laughs> uh, my ANA is positive here. Um, and this was 2004. Uh, and then pregnant in 2008, negative. So according to all of my blood tests, I wasn't sick. And so I did not, I made the choice not to take the medicines and just to keep monitoring me. And, uh, and so I went ahead and got through the pregnancy and I had a healthy baby boy. That's my Solomon, who's now 14. And this is what really changed what we did is right after I had my baby, this was me nine days after giving birth. So when that happened, my husband went, I think we've, I've cracked the code on metabolism here because uh, I gained 40 pounds during the pregnancy and then just fell away. This was my birthday was nine days after birth. So I, I got dressed up and 
the other part that we had never really imagined or understood was that metabolism is not just about how easily you can lose weight or gain muscle, but it's about how quickly your cells can repair damage and function optimally, which also indicates that it can help you reverse disease. And that finally made sense as to why I no longer had lupus, even through pregnancy, which I was told I could never survive. That's when my husband and I started researching how can nutrition really be responsible for all of this. And as scientists, we didn't know about the plant-based movement. We didn't know that there was a such thing as plant-based doctors. Uh, we'd never even heard of the word plant-based. We just wanted to understand the science of cellular repair. And that's why I have a specific protocol for cellular repair. That is, it happens to be plant-based, but it's about using the nutrition your body uses for cellular repair and optimal immune function. And it's why it will help anyone, even if you don't have lupus. I did go one more time, four years later. That's me two days before giving birth to Alex, <laughs> my younger kid. And uh, we have such a fun family. Every year we get dressed up and do a photo shoot for Halloween. This was last year, Karate Kid. And that is Photoshop, my, my older son, Solomon. Uh, cannot jump that high. Uh, but we have we have a lot of fun. And uh, there's my mom too. She lives with us now and she's the best. She, she goes along with it. But I want everyone to be able to have what I have, the ability to live life, to pursue my passions, to serve others, and to grow old with the person I love and raise my children. And with the information that I share, everybody can have that. And my husband and I decided to release our protocol to the public for free. And, uh, and I'm going to show you how you can get five hours of this with all the details to the protocol for free at the end so that you can all have it and share it with everybody that you love. Um, and this hasn't just worked for me. Um, I'll give you some little examples of people. This is Julie who had mixed connective tissue disease. Uh, Julie also had uh, low thyroid. She was exhausted. She had kids that she just didn't even have the energy to take out and have fun with. And she did something called my four-week rapid recovery program where you have to work with me every single day for four weeks. And I optimize your nutrition, but also your lifestyle. I also happen to be an expert in trauma and anxiety. Uh, I thought maybe the path to me helping people the most would be to help them be happier with whatever life they have. Turns out that helps people heal. So I do everything it takes to help people get healthy and happy. And the happier you are, the faster you heal. So that's a big focus of my program too. Well, in four weeks time, first of all, um, her thyroid went back to normal. And yes, this is helpful for things like Hashimoto's. And her, her doctor texted her, didn't you used to be hypothyroid? And yes, everybody who works with me gets my cell phone number. I want to make sure that everybody has the ability to get help whenever they need it or to share good news like this. Uh, after she finished the program, she said she finally had Dr. G energy. And she uh, went from not working to starting two new businesses and going to Disneyland and said her kids had to chase after her because she had so much energy. Um, this is somebody who did uh, my protocol from learning about it for free online. And she said goodbye to Graves disease. Um, and she had an antibody test to prove that she no longer had Graves disease. This is someone who posted in our group Smoothie Shred. Uh, I saw some smoothie shredders in here. It's our free Facebook community for people who want to support each other on my plan. This is David, who was actually my first telemedicine uh, patient that I helped who had lupus, Sjogren's, and scleroderma. Uh, the picture on the left was the best medicine could do. This is him on tons of medicines, in pain, suffering. This is him after a couple of weeks on my protocol using nutrition. Uh, this is what his hands look like. I know it's a tough picture, but people with scleroderma, their skin gets so hard that just bending their fingers causes it to break open and their joints will get infected. There is no treatment for this in modern medicine to this day. Uh, they do not know how to help. In fact, his doctors told him before he started working with me that the only thing they could do was amputate his fingers. This is him after a couple of weeks on my protocol. Then he, uh, he's someone who had been unable to work. He tried to work, but nobody would get past the interview. They couldn't look at him. And uh, that's him going to work. He got a job at a nonprofit helping youth, underserved youth. Uh, he has had an incredible life from there. He has been off his medicine. Now, let me think how long this has been. This is from before my Alex was born. Okay. So over 10 years now, uh, he has been symptom-free and off his medication. And this is someone whose mother told them, uh, my, his mother 
told me that the doctors said for her to start mourning that he would die soon. Well, he is doing fantastic. Uh, and those fingers they were going to amputate now create art that has won competitions in Los Angeles at art galleries. Um, and they call him the rabbit at work and give him carrots for his birthday. And really, I mean, this is what I believe my purpose is. Uh, as a physician, Is it's about helping people live their dreams and live their lives. And this is his dream and he's living it now. Um, this is a nurse, Peggy. I have a lot of doctors and nurses and pharmaceutical representatives and pharmaceutical researchers who work with me. Um, they know that I understand the science of cellular repair. Uh, they want it to be scientific and they also don't want to take medicines. It turns out people in medicine are afraid of medicine just like you are. Well, she had terrible RA and you can see, look how big her wrist was when she started my six week rapid recovery group. So that's a group program where I work with you every day on your happiness and your health and your nutrition to get you better as quickly as possible. So that's her when she started the six week program and look how painful that wrist is. And that's her after at the last meeting, that's the day before we hit six weeks, able to fully uh, use her wrists again, where she couldn't do it for years. Um, Oh, I love this lady. Uh, so six weeks, she was able to fully reverse her uh, ANA uh, at 70 years old. Uh, I have published uh, reversing end stage kidney failure, uh, getting person off the transplant list. I've also gotten someone recently off the lung transplant list. At week five, his lungs were too healthy for transplant. This is someone who followed my protocol online for free. This is with no medications, only my nutrition, discoid lupus. This is lupus that attacks the skin. And that's her after... Less than three weeks. She said, nothing's ever worked before. Um, Mariana was in my six-week rapid recovery group. She had lupus in her brain, causing her to have multiple seizures every day. She stopped having seizures after a couple of weeks. Her lupus antibodies went from over 3,000 to 86 by the end of the group. She went from being home on her parents' couch to out living her dreams, traveling with her significant other. Um, Molly Ann, oh my goodness. This was an email that somebody did my rapid recovery group sent me. Uh, she had had lupus for many, many years, as well as other autoimmune diseases. And she said that she had eye inflammation for nine and a half years from dermatomyositis that was gone after six weeks in my group. Her liver enzymes, which have been high for nine and a half years, were normal. She then sent me another email that her internist, who'd been seeing her since she was 18 and she was in her 40s, um, was amazed and said that her other doctor emailed him to say, what is going on with this lady? Why is she so healthy? And on top of that, when Molly Ann was in my group, her son followed the diet with her and reversed his own lupus. His own lupus antibodies became negative, just following along with his mother. And so <clears throat> they wanted me to give a grand rounds um, to the hospital to explain what the heck I did <laughs> to help this woman recover. Um, this is a retired teacher who was told that she was going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. And in six weeks, she sent me a video of her walking up and down her hallways. Uh, Jackie, rheumatoid arthritis and mixed connective tissue disease. Um, <laughs> in six weeks, she had so many changes. Uh, she was showing off how she could hold a pencil. That was something she couldn't do. Her husband was in tears um, with how much better she was. Um, and this is very short periods of time. I know a lot of times you hear from people that you change your tie, give it six months to see if it's working. Um, no, it, it can be a lot faster than for many people. It's a matter of days to weeks, especially in, in intensive programs where I'm looking over the shoulder. Uh, there she is playing and showing off on the trampoline in our smoothie shred group saying that uh, she was told that she no longer needed to take any medicines for lupids, stopped her steroids um, and her blistering skin disease went away as well. Um, all she wanted was to be a grandmother. She, it's even her Facebook name is about being a grandmother. And now she can have fun and jump around with her little girl. This is what health is about. This is another doctor who had a mystery disease, could not walk without taking steroids. Nobody could figure it out. She's a physician herself and the head of internal medicine at her hospital. She said, if you can help me, I'll make the residents read your book. Well, she got off her steroids. Still don't know what the name of the disease is. Doesn't matter. She's able to be healthy and she's teaching her interns as well. Um, it also works for children. This is a child who had lupus that attacked her heart and her uh, lungs and her kidneys all at the same time. And she was a code blue. Her hospital um, actually had to bring her back. She died. They brought her back. When I met with her mother, it was an emergency. And we started her right away on the most strict form of my protocol. 
And quickly she got better. These are just text messages that her mom said I could share. Her heart went back to normal, no more fluid around her heart. She started doing martial arts, joined the student council, wants to be a doctor, straight A's. Um, That was her on St. Patty's Day. Uh, But her kidneys were better within two weeks after doing the protocol. So kids heal very quickly. And, you know, their little bodies are being made out of the foods we eat. Kids are sicker than ever. And now, you know, I was 16. I was considered young for having lupus. Now uh, I see kids as young as two years old and all they eat is macaroni and cheese and hot dogs. Right. So we have to be very careful and take care of our kids, but they can get better and they do get better very quickly. Sarah just came to me. Uh, actually she was working with me on something entirely different. Um, but she lived in chronic pain. She had HPV and, um, dysplasia, meaning she had precancer cells that they kept having to remove from her cervix. And, uh, not only did she lose the weight she wanted to lose her chronic pain went away. And for the first time in years, she had a normal pap smear, no more dysplasia and tested negative for HPV. Uh, this is a YouTuber who found me, did my free stuff online and talked about how her endometriosis pain went away. There's a guy I met at the gym who said he had food allergies, couldn't eat any fruit, but he drank milk every morning and ate meat all day. And uh, he happened to be working out next to me, talking to me about his blood pressure. Next thing you know, he was able to get off of, um, well, he was able to reintroduce fruit again. His wife held an EpiPen ready while he tried watermelon and he loved it and it worked. And he was able to reintroduce all of the fruit back because you have to understand that allergies and food sensitivities, those also use the inflammatory immune system. If the inflammatory immune system is overactive, uh, it doesn't just create things like autoimmune disease, but chronic inflammatory illnesses everywhere, as well as things like allergies. A lot of folks that I see with autoimmune disease had food sensitivities first. Others, food sensitivities develop second, but they are very related. Bernard did my rapid recovery group with diabetes and glaucoma. And on week five, he went to his doctor and he no longer had glaucoma. And if you've seen his, these are clips, these are screenshots of their videos that they gave me for that are on my YouTube channel. And he said, the best part of my program though, was not just getting his eyes back and being able to hike and jog every day at 77, but the fact that he'd been a grumpy old man all of his life. And he was actually a happy guy. He learned how to be happy from me. And to me, that's the best part of it all. Um, this is someone else who had peripheral neuropathy after chemotherapy that went away. I've had multiple people do my rapid recovery group to recover from chemotherapy and have the neuropathy go away. And I'm sorry, this is dense. Um, but she is, uh, she had to tell us all how she had healed from that. And before I get into the nitty gritty, I would love to share this story with you, um, really about how amazing it is for yourself and the people, you know, when you take care of your health. So this is Rachel. And Rachel came to me one month before her scheduled C-section. And she had lupus and Sjogren's disease, which are both autoimmune diseases. And the problem was after her first daughter was born and after a miscarriage, she had terrible flares of lupus. And she was terrified that she was going to stay in the hospital after her child was born because she was already in so much pain. She had to take her maternity leave early. She was hurting so badly and was exhausted. Well, she did my four-week rapid recovery program, literally leading up to the date that she was going to give birth. And uh, by the weekend before she gave birth, she was running around a park showing her other daughter how to fly a kite. And this was her right after giving birth. And there's a beautiful video she made for me on my YouTube um, where she gave this talk. She gave her testimonial in the sunlight in the park. And she said she'd never been able to sit in the sunlight since she'd been diagnosed because she was so sensitive to it the way, the way I had been. So she was able to completely reverse her lupus and sugar. And she's gotten off all medicine and she's actually had another child since then. And um, I'll show you some more. So that's some of the lupus rash she had and see that her skin completely cleared up. So she, uh, during the pandemic actually had another kid, no relapse, no medications required, still completely free of lupus and Sjogren's, no medications necessary. So Rachel did it and she's feeling great. Well, right after she gets better, uh, her husband, Nir, got a call from his family in Israel that his mother was in the hospital and she had just had a fatal heart attack. She wasn't dead yet, but they said this was going to be fatal. There was no coming back from this heart attack. Now, she'd been sick a long time. You can see she suffered from uh, obesity. She was 68. She had type 2 diabetes, super high cholesterol, even on the medicines. She'd had 25 heart attacks since she was 41 years old, 25. She'd had three bypass surgeries, 10 stents, and she was already in heart failure for over two years at this point. So they said, 
this is this this was back in 2017. They said her heart is too sick to heal. So near you must come to Israel and say goodbye. Nir had just watched his wife heal from a chronic disease that was supposed to be incurable. And he thought, I'm just going to bring the blender because I teach people how to do what I call hypernourishment. That's the name of my protocol, how to hypernourish using a blender to get all the food in. And he, he brought the blender to Israel into the ICU and he gave his mother nothing but migraine smoothies. And what happened was in five days, she walked out of the hospital. One year later, she was off her cholesterol meds and her cholesterol was normal. She was still insulin dependent, but now her blood sugar was normal with the insulin, whereas before it was still abnormal. She had no more symptoms of heart disease, no chest pain, had lost tons of weight. That was what she looked like a year later. So what works for cellular repair, as I said, is not just going to repair damage from autoimmune disease, but it can repair damage anywhere. And this is a patient who was told that she was dying and here she is still alive and healthy and loving life again. Now, Nir went through a lot of stress. And so he ended up contacting me months later and it turned out he was diabetic. And I said, what happened? And look at him here, you see this belly, look at his wife, she just had a baby and she's looking like this and look at this belly. That is not someone who's following the diet with his wife, right? And so he made an appointment with me and I said, buddy, tell me what's going on here. And, uh, and he said, well, I'm a teacher, I'm eating all sorts of junk at school. And I could feel the stress coming from him. And I said, near, they're okay. Your mom's okay. And your wife is okay. And he started crying. And I said, you need to let this out. Now they need you to be okay. So he listened to me, I said, you got to start seeing a the therapist, you got to start releasing all of this, you need to start taking care of your health. And he listened to me. Three weeks later, he sent me this text. I'm working out three times a week. I feel like a new person. He'd already reduced his metformin. He'd lost weight and he was feeling great. Well, in one month, his chronic fatty liver that had been high liver enzymes for years was now gone. His liver was normal. Six weeks later, he was not even close to diabetic. To be diabetic, the A1C he has to, it had to be like six, right? His was like, I'm trying to remember what it was, six and a half. Pre-diabetic would be five, seven. Here he is at four, eight. There's no sign at all. Six weeks. Most people are no longer diabetic within four to six weeks on my plan. And there he is afterwards. Now, the reason that I tell you this family story is because here's their children. These beautiful little kids. This is the newest one drinking her green smoothie. <laughs> These children had the genes for heart disease, diabetes, lupus, Sjogren's, heart failure. These kids carry the genes for so many different diseases, but the diseases will stop here because this generation of children is going to be raised on the right foods so that they never have to suffer from the diseases of their parents and their grandparents. This is the power of what the truth about health will give you is that yes, you can live a better life for yourself, but we can also save the next generation. When I was in medical school 20 years ago, I was told this was the first generation of kids that were not going to outlive their parents. Every other generation got older and older, better and better. And now we've reversed that course. Kids are getting sicker, younger and younger. We can see signs of heart disease on MRIs at seven years old. Blood pressure start to go up around that time. We have autoimmune diseases happening in children. We have diabetes happening in children. When I was in medical school, we didn't call it type one and type two diabetes. We called it child onset and adult onset because only adults got the type that was caused by obesity. But now children get it too. So we call it type one and type two because we can't differentiate by age anymore. We have children with heart disease, diabetes, autoimmune disease. And it's because the diets have gotten worse and worse. It is processed, it is junk, and it is hurting our babies. So when you do the right thing for you, the right thing happens for everybody else. It's a domino effect. I'm living that domino effect myself. You are dominoes right now if you're listening to me. And when you embrace this, it can change the lives of everyone. So if you can't do it for yourself with your own motivation, Think of that next generation. I know for me, the dominoes have been pretty wild. I just wanted to work with the homeless. That was my goal was to work with the homeless. Well, 
the word started to spread on what I've been doing. And it went from my community knowing about it to online learning about it. Um, when I wrote my first book, Goodbye Lupus, in 2015, it became a bestseller before it was even published. It was just in the pre-order side of Amazon, and it became a bestseller. And it is still a bestseller to this day. Um, I've written multiple books. I have one coming out soon that will be a recipe book. Um, but every single one of them can, became a bestseller immediately, and it's been changing lives all over the world. Um, my, <laughs> my family and I have been on the cover of magazines. Um, this was touching for me to be on the cover of Fit Over 40 because I was hoping to live to 40. And I was shocked that someone wanted me in as, as an example of health and fitness at 40. Um, it still astounds me to this day. I thought I'd be disabled at best. I've been in documentaries. Uh, there's a new one, Disease Reversal Hope, out now that, that also um, David is in. I just showed you. I've been on tons of TV shows. I've become kind of a regular on all the different news stations around here. If there's something going on for health, they have me on. Um, Plant-based news, I'm grateful to be on often talking about health and the immune system. Um, I've been on so many different news stations. Uh, I'm a professor for eCornell. So I know a lot of folks go to uh, T. Colin Campbell's courses to learn about the research and science behind plant-based nutrition. And a couple of years ago, they asked me to come on to be their sole professor for autoimmune disease because my protocol has worked better than anything else for inflammation and autoimmune. So I've been very honored to be able to be the professor for their course. I'm also uh, the first plant-based doctor to be on the Forbes Health Advisory Board uh, because of the scientific validity of what I do and the results I've been able to have I've been able to be a mainstream person. And that's really what this means. This is why I'm showing you this is that my goal is to make what we do mainstream. So it's not just those of you who've kind of gotten down the rabbit hole to learn that there's a better way or who are first time listeners right now learning these new things, but that it will become normal and mainstream to know that there is a better way to treat autoimmune, to treat health, and that we do not have to walk around chronically ill. That chronic illness has been created by our lifestyles and we can change that fact. Um, there's a lot of new research now that are supporting that. Um, there was some research that was done uh, at Francis Crick Biomedical Research Institute in London because they're trying to find out why are autoimmune disease rising and spreading over the last 40 years? It's gone up anywhere from three to 9% per year over the last 40 years. And they thought maybe there was a change. Was the rise and spread? of autoimmune diseases into areas that never had autoimmune disease before, like inflammatory bowel disease in Middle East and Asia. <clears throat> what they found is there's no genetic reason, but instead it exactly follows the spread of the Western diet. They've also found, there was a, a study done that showed right when the pandemic was starting, you guys, I'm sure all remember those days before we had treatments, somebody thought to actually look at what people were eating and how sick were they getting. So Dr. Seidelman of Columbia uh, actually studied frontline doctors and nurses who had high frequency contact and exposure to COVID-19 over two months in the summer of 2020 to see who got sick. And the results were striking. What they found was that um, people who said they were plant-based or vegan had 73% lower odds of getting moderate to severe COVID-19. 73% lower compared to people who did not follow a plant-based or vegan or vegetarian diet. Uh, people who were high protein eaters, so people who were paleo keto folks, they actually had a 48% higher rate of moderate to severe COVID. So if you think about that spread, 48% higher risk of moderate to severe COVID on a high protein diet, which really is a high animal product diet versus 73% lower risk. And I think the most important part of their study that they didn't really talk about much was the middle people. They found people who ate a pescatarian diet, which was mostly plants, but fish, right? People think fish is healthy, right? So a lot of folks will tell me, well, I want to be healthy. So I'm going to eat plant-based plus some fish. What they found the people who are pescatarian, so nothing processed, just plants and fish, had 59% lower odds of moderate to severe COVID, which is better than people who eat just high protein, right? but still 14% worse than people who ate no fish at all and just ate plants. So the conclusion of the, the study was that maybe people who eat plant-based are healthier because they get more nutrients, which I agree with. But what they didn't talk about was the deleterious or harmful effects of eating any kind of animal product, that just adding fish 
lowered the protection from COVID by 14% compared to just plants alone. Very, very cool research. Now, this really um, mirrors what I've been seeing doing my work over the past 15 years now, uh, is that when I'm reversing autoimmune diseases in people, that even people who add fish are not able to get those results that they can get from doing it purely plant-based. So there is a harmful effect to adding any animal products, even fish. And that's what they saw looking through COVID. Um, then John Hopkins did a study uh, looking at cruciferous vegetables in COVID. And they found, uh, these are the same folks that found that cruciferous vegetables will kill cancer cells in vitro. Well, they also found cruciferous vegetables can block the replication of the COVID virus and the flu virus, they can cut it down in half. Can you imagine? Just cruciferous vegetables, which those of you who already know that I recommend high doses of cruciferous vegetables, that makes sense, right? So it can kill viruses, it can uh, kill cancer cells in vitro, and it can optimize your immune function. So the research that's been coming out, and I swear they, they did not even plan, they all wore green on the day they had me on. <laughs> So cool. But I'm bringing this to the public all the time. I'm actually leaving Wednesday morning next week just to fly to New York and back to talk about it on a morning show to just keep bringing this to the public. I want this mainstream so that everybody understands that this is something that everybody can do and you can do it with the supermarket. Um, I've also had people who have been sick with long COVID, usually who get their sense of smell back and the brain fog lifts in a matter of weeks, especially in rapid recovery. So I want to get you super enthusiastic before I get to the nitty gritty, because I know if I just told people that um, what to eat and what to do, you could tune me out. But if I get you to get excited about it, you're going to hold it in. Now, um, I'm going to give you the outline of what to do. But if you want the details at the end, I'm going to show you how you can watch the long version of my classes for free. OK, so don't get nervous or feel like you have to write everything down. I'm going to show you how to do this. So how do you get a healthy immune system? Well, let's start with what does a healthy immune system do? Healthy immune system can reverse a disease, right? If you get sick, you can get unsick again. You don't just stay sick forever, chronically ill. Two, it can fight diseases. If you get an infection, it can fight it off. And three it can recover from diseases. You can come back to baseline, all right? If you can't do these things, you do not have a healthy immune system. How do you get one? Well, in my book, I, I talk about the six steps to healing with supermarket foods. And it's important at supermarket foods. You do not need supplements. You do not need some herb or grass that grows in a rainforest somewhere. You can go to supermarkets. People have done it who are on welfare and using WIC, okay? You can do this. First three steps you're probably aware of. If you've been to this conference and you're listening to the speakers that I saw on this list, you already know that there's going to be some of this happening here. First, don't get sicker. Very, very important, right? If you want to get healthy, stop getting sicker. How do you do that? You eliminate the unhealthy stuff. Animal products, processed foods, oils. Now, most oils, okay? Processed oils. I'm going to tell you an exception a little bit. But this is pretty universal. I'm sure you've heard this a lot, how it impacts the heart how it can impact things like cancer. There's so many speakers you're hearing talking about that. I'm going to tell you how these things impact your immune system. So when I talk about avoiding my animal products, I'm talking about dairy, I'm talking about eggs, I'm talking about fish, I'm talking about all the different animals, right? Why does that have a negative impact on your immune system? All right. Well, all of these have something called arachidonic acid, okay? We're, and this is the omega-6 fatty acid pathway. You might have heard of that. Now, this is a pathway that I learned about in medical school, but what I never saw in medical school was this top part here. What I saw was just arachidonic acid, not where it came from. And if you look here, you'll see that these are the enzymes of this pathway, 5 LOX, COX-1, COX-2, and these are the inflammatory immune cells, right? Leukotriene B4, thromboxane A2, prostaglandin E2. No reason to write these things down, just so you can understand the pathway. I like people to understand the science here. So... The way this works is the more arachidonic acid you have, the more enzyme activity you have, and the more of this product you have. There's no limit. There's nothing that slows this down. The more of this you have, the more of this. So you can see how if you have more inflammatory uh, omega-6, you're going to have more inflammatory mediators, right? Now, you do need some inflammatory immune cells. The problem is we've overdosed because, again, it's coming from all of these products, right? So what happens if you have an increase in these areas? So if you have more of this, you have more of all of these. Now, each of these has a role in and of itself. 
All right. So five locks is involved in cellular growth. Well, if you have too much cellular growth, what's going to happen? Cancer, right? Now, if you have too much of this, you're going to have too much leukotriene before. Symptoms that happen from too much leukotriene before, inflammatory bowel disease, asthma, heart disease, chronic inflammation, arthritis, edema, and pain. If you have too much of this, you've got too much of this, right? COX-1, you might've heard of that. This is involved in blood clots. So if you have too much of this, you're gonna have heart attacks and strokes. This one is involved in many things, including vascular genesis, growth of blood vessels. If you have too much COX-2, you're gonna have too much blood supply to things like cancer. If you have too much prostaglandin E2, you're gonna have more cancer, more irritable bowel, more inflammatory bowel disease, more chronic inflammation and pain. If you have any of this stuff here, you're having too much of this. You see the connection? I was never given this connection as a doctor. What I learned was what medications to use to block these enzymes. That's what I learned in medical school. And I'm not saying you shouldn't take it. If you need an aspirin to block your COX-1 because you've had heart attacks or strokes, okay. But don't forget this. This is powerful right here, yeah? Now, the next steps are, how do you repair the damage? A lot of the time, what you hear about and, and when people are talking about plant-based nutrition is that first part, right? Is that stop eating this stuff. But then what do you eat? Well, that depends what book you read. Right? Everyone's got different ideas of what's the best plant foods. For me, again, my specialty is on cellular biology, on the impact of nutrients. high blood pressure, pain, skin problems. If you've actually got symptoms that you can see, enough of your body is sick for it to show. And if you've got about a hundred trillion cells, that's a lot of cells that had to get sick for you to see it. So what I do is I overdose people in the nutrients to repair the damage because you got a lot of cells to heal. I always think about the cells all holding out a little cup saying, please, can I have some more? Well, we're gonna give you as much as you can take, <laughs> okay? So what do you need for hypernourishment? Number one, focus on the raw vegetables, especially the cruciferous. See that big broccoli, cauliflower, kale, right? There's a cabbage over here, yes, right? The reason, the reason is, It's true. These are superstars. So if you're trying to overdose in vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and all the other phytonutrients, well, it's a lot easier to use the cruciferous vegetables because even though you're eating a lot of it, it's less than you'd need if you were eating lesser vegetables, peppers and carrots or something. People will say to me like, oh, I'm overdosing in blueberries to get all my antioxidants. I'm like, oh my God, try red cabbage. nourishment and you will feel the difference. Uh, one glorious bowel movements because yay fiber, uh, for most people, unless they've got really, uh, really weak bowels. That's a, that's a separate thing there. Uh, two energy, real energy. Most people are tired because they're either dehydrated or malnourished. Well, here we go. Get those real vitamins and minerals. When, that's the first thing I did this morning. I was like, Oh my God, I need my smoothie, my nutrients. So I Um, but one thing that you'll get to know if you start to follow me and learn what I do is I don't base anything I do on theory as a survivor of chronic illness. And as a, as a health provider, I only teach people what I've seen work personally. And I've helped thousands of people from all over the world, get their health back from chronic disease and they work. So cruciferous vegetables. All right. Um, two water intake. People are so dehydrated. I mentioned it's a major cause of fatigue. It's also the, the primary
about 96 ounces or 2.8 liters is a good starting amount. If you weigh less than 96 pounds, then you just go an ounce per pound. Um, you do need, and, and oftentimes we'll raise that up to a gallon, which would be 3.8 liters for those of you on other parts of the world. I know Americans all measure things weirdly, but that's just part of our identity. We like to be unique here, um, but it is a lot of water. And bodybuilders have known for decades that a gallon of water will work for body transformation. They just didn't know why. Now we know it's responsible uh, for not just hydration, uh, but also it's necessary for cellular repair. And it also inflates the padding in your joints. If you have joint pain, you may be dehydrated. That can make a difference for you as well. So if you are tired, headachy, constipated, in pain, or you're sick and need to heal, you got to get that. add too much fiber to your diet, um, you don't like your smoothies too thick, you have trouble getting these things in in their raw form and you do need to grind them up, um, then cold pressed flaxseed oil does work really well and effectively. For hypernourishment, uh, anywhere from a handful to half a cup would count towards hypernourishment depending on how sick you are. If you're generally healthy, a handful a day is fantastic. Um, and that would be about two and a half tablespoons of flax oil if you preferred that one, keep it refrigerated so it doesn't go bad on you. Um, Okay. And, and I know, listen, uh, I've been in this world, uh, in the plant-based world for a while now, and I know people have gotten really afraid of fats. The problem is it's gone so far that it's making people sick because there's some that we need. And this is one that's super, super essential. And I'll show you why right here. So number one, uh, omega-3 fatty acids are necessary for integrating into your cell membranes to create, uh, their ability to communicate with each other. So if you need a fast metabolism for either fat loss or muscle building or for healing, then your cells need to be able to communicate well with other cells. Nutrients need to get in and toxins need to pass out. If you don't have enough omega-3 fatty acids in your diet, then your body will use omega-6 fatty acids instead, which it's getting from all the other processed foods or other oils, animal products. But those create very rigid cells where nutrients can't get in, toxins can't get out, and communication doesn't happen. So for a lot of folks who are, they're like, I'm already plant-based, I'm exercising every day, I'm running on the treadmill, and I can't lose that body fat, it's because they're on that no fat plan. If you add omega-3s, fat loss starts to happen quickly. My husband, I told you, uh, wrote the book on metabolism, and he used to have the largest boot camps in Orange County, California. And so what he would do is put everybody through the same exercise program, but manipulate their diets to study these things. And he found the more omega-3s he got people to eat, the faster the fat loss with no upper limit. So he already proved that there are some fats that actually help you lose fat. So it is an oversimplification for people to say that all fats are bad or all fats become fat. It's actually not the case. Some fats become cells. Some fats become immune cells. Some fats become part of your brain and your nervous system. And omega-3s are the essential ones. So if things aren't quite working, if you can't get a full recovery, if you can't lose that final weight, then it might be that you're a bit deficient in your omega threes. Um, they're also necessary for brain health. They are the primary building block of your neurons, your brain health cells. So that's very important for your memory, mood, cognitive function. There was even a study done where it worked for um, bipolar disease, depression, um, it's anti aging for the brain. It's been shown to protect against dementia and Alzheimer's, including the ALA from flax and chia. Some people. Uh, really think that it, you have to go right to like algae to get DHA and EPA, but ALA that comes right from the flax and chia is important for brain health. Um, but the part that I want to focus on today is what it does for your immune cells. So I just showed you the pathway for the omega-6, which is the inflammatory immune pathway. And here is the anti-inflammatory immune system. So here's the ALA I just mentioned. Don't memorize all this. I'm just showing you the pathway. There's EPA and DHA that you've probably heard of as omega threes. And here's how they create your anti inflammatory immune system, right? So, prostaglandin E3, leukotriene B5, these are anti inflammatory immune mediators. Here's the thing. And I saw somebody just wrote down, you know, I include, I have a tablespoon a day of uh, hemp, chia, and flax in my breakfast. So, first of all, the hemp wouldn't count towards your omega-6 because it's more, or omega-3 because it's more omega-6 uh, than omega-3. I want you to use flax and chia. 
But a tablespoon a day may not be enough because what we're looking for is to raise the ratio of three to six. So what they found for human health is that anywhere from nine to one to one to one, six to three would be healthy. There was a study done about 20 years ago where they found that the average American had a ratio of 40 to one, six to three, inflammatory to anti-inflammatory. I've had people tested who are 200 to one. So we need to get those mega threes up fast for those trillions of cells you have that need it. And that's why I recommend so much of it. Once you're healthy, again, a handful a day, that'll keep you going pretty well. But if you're sick, you really want to raise this up. Now, here's how we're able to get results that many people can't see otherwise without introducing these omega-3s. And I call it hacking your health because my husband was once a computer scientist before he got into the health world. These are the two pathways for uh, the uh, inflammatory versus the anti-inflammatory immune system. So again, animal fats, processed foods, vegetable oils, all are leading into the omega-6 pathway to create the inflammatory immune cells. And here's our flax and chia seeds bringing into the anti-inflammatory immune system. So these two use the very same enzyme. And this is why a lot of folks, you know, have heard, including other physicians, that you can't effectively convert flax and chia's ALA into all of the uh, immune cells that you need. It's not actually the case. The problem is the holdup is here. The Delta 60 desaturase enzyme actually prefers the inflammatory pathway for some reason. So if you are still eating a lot of junk here, you're going to preferentially make more inflammatory immune cells because this enzyme will be hanging out over here. But if you eliminate the inflammatory foods and you will get uh, that Delta-6 to saturate enzyme to come over and do the work it needs to on the other side, and boom, you're gonna get an enormous uh, influx in the omega-3s. And what's really neat is that once you get your levels of EPA up, EPA actually blocks the breakdown of arachidonic acid. So even if you're getting more meat, eggs, and seafood over here and bypassing this area over here, well, it's going to block the breakdown. So this is really, really important. And you can see how eating this way can really get your anti-inflammatory immune system to take over and quiet down this already overactive inflammatory immune cell. Pretty cool, huh? Science to me is the most exciting thing in the world. <laughs> so how do you do it? Well, there's different ways to get these foods in. Uh, you can eat salads that are bigger than your head. I, I usually enjoy doing that very much. But if you don't like kale as much as I do, then we created something called the smoothie solution. And I see people saying smoothie shredders in the house. Hey, hey, Stephen. Um, smoothie solution, what my husband and I realized is that most people won't eat their salads to get that pound a day or more of their cruciferous vegetables in. But we realized that if we put it all into a blender, so the veggies, the flax and chia, the water, and then we throw in some fruit for flavor, boom, people will do it and they'll drink it out of a straw. So again, I told you, I, I share my work for free. If you want free recipes to make it, go to smoothieshred.com, take a screenshot of that and go ahead and make it again. That is a free website. It's got videos, it's got workouts, it has smoothie recipes, and it doesn't require your email address. You can use it 100% for free. Um, that was actually a picture taken. My husband used this picture for the website uh, after my second son was born. My second son was five months old when that picture was taken. Um, and so the metabolism thing really works. Um, but my husband decided to make this website because, you know, as much as I always tell people, you have to save your own life. He says, I have to help them save their life. So all of this is free to the public. And as I said, you don't even need to enter a mailing list. You just can use the website for free. And if you go there, you'll see all these different things, recipes, video libraries. And this is just to bring you to our Facebook page if you want to be in our free smoothie shred group. So all those people who are saying, hey, I'm a shredder, they're in our, our free community. It's got people from all over the world just supporting each other, just supporting each other with getting healthy. Um, and here's, a you know, it has all these different smoothie recipes there and all these videos you can watch on what to do, some from him, my husband, and some from me. So it is a really cool resource. So the last thing I wanna leave you with um, is really what you can do right now to get started, right? Because I want you to know what to do walking out of, well, walking out, <laughs> shutting off your computer or your device after watching this um, is how you're gonna start. So number one, even if you're not ready to give up the junk, even if you're not ready to, um, to become plant-based, all right? 
at least add what you're missing. What we have found is the most important factor in people's health is not the junk they're eating, but what they're missing. And that's whether they're plant-based or not. So if you are not eating your raw vegetables, if you're not getting in your flax and chia, if you are not drinking water, you're just drinking tea, whatever it is, then it's time to add what you're missing. And you can do that without ever having to fight that battle in your mind of how am I going to live without cheese or how am I going to, you know, give up all this junk that I'm doing, add what you're missing. And I've found what this does is a couple of things. Psychologically, it's easier to start because you don't have to set the date of your last uh, piece of meat, like the setting the date of the last cigarette, uh, right? You can start with what you are missing and you can do that today. All right. So that's number one. Uh, the other thing that it does is it will crowd things out. If you have a big green smoothie for breakfast, you're not going to be so hungry for that bagel and cream cheese, right? So it kind of naturally will crowd out the things that you're missing. Two, don't wait for some special occasion to start. New Year's is a while away, not your birthday, not, you know, after Mother's Day, just start. And again, just start by adding what you're missing. Celebrate everyone a win. This is a picture from my rapid recovery group, but it actually came from a, a wellness session I did. So I do wellness sessions for people all over the world every day uh, to help them get on track, to help them figure out really, especially the self-sabotage. Um, my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, is mostly about if you have all this information, why haven't you done this yet? Why do you keep stopping yourself? So all of the psychology behind it. Um, I have found what people need is not just what to eat and what not to eat, but help me figure out how. How do I do it? And one of the ways you do it is you celebrate every win. People usually focus on their failures and they beat themselves up. Instead, focus on your win. If you ate the potato chips, but you also ate a salad, celebrate the salad, be proud of yourself and make a plan for tomorrow about how you're going to double the salad and minimize the chips, right? But make sure you keep yourself in that positive mind space because that's what's going to motivate you as you move forward. And focus on your why. I call it your why. And um, <laughs> You know, uh, I did an interview with John Robbins from the Food Revolution, and he honored me because it was his book that made my parents vegetarian when I was a kid. And he said he had a, a quote from my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, on his desk that said, focus on what you want most rather than what you want right now. And what your why is what you want most. This was actually uh, my 10 year anniversary with my husband. We renewed our vows in Hawaii and that's why I rewore my wedding dress. I'll, I'll wear that as many times as I can. Um, and uh, there was my little buddies who broke into the scene and it was just a beautiful day. And actually nobody else was there besides the photographer. We just held each other and cried and, and felt grateful for our lives together. But the, this is my why. I wanna grow old with the men I love. I wanna raise these children. I wanna be like my, my uncle when he passed away. He was surrounded by his wife, his sister, his kids, all of his grandkids flew in from all over the world to be at his side when he took his last breath. I want to have that family. I want to grow old. I want all of you too as well. You were also part of my why. I just couldn't fit you all in the picture. I want to help spread the word and teach people how to live the, life, the best life they can free of chronic disease so that they can live their why as well. So for me, I'll never go back to my cheese addiction because my why is so big that what I want most will always overshadow even the most delicious thing I can remember from my past. And honestly, it turns me off now, but it's been, like I said, almost 18 years. It grosses me out now. But if it's not grossing you out yet, you need your why to really keep you focused. And the other is you need to find a supportive community. Our Smoothie Shred group is our community, and you're welcome to join us. Like I said, it's free. All right. Um, and you can find it at smoothieshred.com. Um, but otherwise, find your own. But make sure you're not the only person you know who eats this weird diet because eventually your environment will win. And people who feel unsupported will often go back to their old ways. And that's why we started this group <clears throat> is we wanted people to have a community. And people in our community are celebrating every day, losing weight, getting off their blood pressure medicine, stopped anxiety meds, sinus meds, lupus going into remission. So anyway. Find your community. Here's what I was saying. My free classes, take a screenshot. Um, Goodbyelupus.com, like I said. And so what the classes are is basically my book, Goodbye Lupus, but me teaching it. So if you enjoyed the time we just spent together, um, then, and you wanted to listen to me teach rather than just read it in Goodbye Lupus, it also has dozens of case studies that are in my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease. 
Um, although there's more in the book, there's plenty of them there. So if you want to learn it by me teaching it rather than just the books, you can do it for free. All right. You go to goodbyelupus.com and you can, it'll be free up there for the next five days. So take a photo of that. Make sure you go there. And um, what you're going to do when you click on that, you're going to see an option when you scroll down where you can watch for free. So again, I'm not here to sell you anything. I just want you to have access to the information. As I said, it's my life's mission for this to be what everybody just knows to do rather than something you can only find if you joined a program like this and happen to hear about it. So you just pick the date and you watch it. So, all right. So you'll be able to find that at my website at goodbyelupus.com. Okay. Um, let me see here. Okay. So let me just this out. If you're on social media, I do this every day. I post every day. I've got to say uh, for the first time in years, I have not posted for the past couple of days. But as I said in the beginning, I have been with my family, uh, with my uncle passing away. But normally every single day, I am uh, online to motivate people and to teach people not only what to do, but how to stay committed. I did so many people tell me that <clears throat> it's my daily videos that keep them motivated, keep them excited, keep them dedicated to their health. So please follow me there. In fact, the newest thing that I've been doing this year, I can't believe it's already May. Gosh, I started at the end, at the end of December is uh, now every Wednesday at 12.30 Pacific time. So that'll be 3.30 uh, Eastern time. I do free Q and A's for the public. So today's a busy day of teaching for me, but I do that for the public and people from all over the world come. And it's live streamed on, good, on my Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, again, as a public service. So if you don't get your question in here, and you have more questions, um, every Wednesday I spend an hour with the public so that I can keep answering questions and help people know what to do for their health and for their lives. I'm in it for you guys. So follow me wherever you follow people. I think it depends on your age, you know, so it's like 40s to 60s, I'm, I'm you know, younger <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> and, uh, and if you need to reach me, here's my information. You can screenshot it. And um, I'm happy to help any of you any way I can with getting your health back. So I'll leave that up for any of you who need to screenshot it. And I'm happy to take any questions with the time we have left. Great. Thank you so much, doctor. That was a very, very powerful presentation. You're welcome. I'm going to drink my smoothie. Look, it's not a prop. I'm really, I got it here. All right. So I'm sure it's delicious. So yeah. And look, gallon of water. I practice what I preach. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Definitely have a high energy to you for sure. So, um, so we're going to begin our Q and A. Uh, we'll be asking questions of the doctor, uh, and also give the audience the ability to ask questions as well. We just first want to explain to everybody how this works. We don't take questions directly from the chat. Instead, we ask everyone to raise their hands virtually. If you're not sure how to do this, to the bottom right, second from the right, there's a button called reactions. You're going to click on that. And from the pop-up menu, you're going to click on the raise hand function. We will then take questions in the order in which they were received. When it's your turn, I will unmute you and ask you to state where you're from and ask your question. We ask that everyone keeps their questions brief and on topic, and then I will mute you. Uh, in order to keep things moving, we ask that you just ask one question at a time. If you do want to ask a second question and there is time, please raise your hand again. And uh, if we can get to you, we will get to that question as well. So uh, real quickly, I will open it up to the audience and we'll start off with Sophia. Sophia, please state where you're from and, and ask your question to the doctor. Yes, thank you. Hi, doctor. My name is Sophia from Ottawa, Canada. Yes, please. Uh, mm, uh, I have knee synovial inflammation, bakery cyst, and toffee in my knee. My, my question is, would it be possible to get rid of toffee without medication? Toffee? I'm not sure I understand. Like bumps around my uh, uh, knee because I put on uh, knee braces. Maybe these are crystals, maybe... Uh, and it's like bumps that get around all my knees. Bumps? Is it bumps? I'm yeah. sorry, I'm just, I'm just having a little bit of trouble. She's saying, she is saying bumps. I'm not sure. It sounded like the coffee thing. I'm not sure what she's saying. Can you can you spell that, Sophia, if you know how to spell? To uh, toffee is uh, T-O-P-H-I. It's like crystal due to gout, maybe. Okay, okay. But I don't have really gout in my... Uh, uh, okay, so but it's uric acid. acid. Uric acid. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I was. I'm so sorry. I was just having a little trouble. No problem. Um, so, 
you know, my, my protocol specific for, again, cellular repair, not for disease. Um, so I'm ch- I don't, if the only time I will say a definite yes to anything is if I have a, a case that says, yes, here's someone who had exactly that. And here's what happened. And I can't think of a person right now that had those uric acid deposits, but I can say that it's been helpful for people with all different ki- types of arthritis and it has helped people with gout. Um, so I don't see any reason why, uh, it couldn't be helpful. I know for sure it'll be good for your health. So we can see what happens with those deposits and please let me know. But in the meantime, your immune system will get healthier. Your inflammation will come down. Um, so there's, it's, there's no downside, you know what I mean? But, uh, I don't know if the, the deposits will go away, but I do know that your inflammation will come down and your immune system will get healthier. So, so you just mentioned that you focus on, on the cellular level and cellular repair as opposed to disease. If I understood your presentation correctly, you had a, uh, you had something where it kind of showed that it blocks, you know, or prevents the diet prevents cancer. Do you, do you have any, uh, patients that they were able to reverse cancer? Yeah. Uh, so I'm very careful about talking about this topic because in the U S currently you can't have, you can't treat cancer. Uh, unless you're using FDA approved medicines and uh, surgeries and all of those things. Um, I can speak from personal experience of things that have happened. So I have definitely had a lot of clients who have cancer, uh, who have had really good things happen to them. So I had um, members of my rapid recovery group whose uh, PSA took a nosedive after being only elevated for prostate cancer. Um, I've had markers for uh, breast cancer and ovarian cancer that went back down to normal range. Um, I've had folks, um, I had one woman with end stage breast cancer who had tumors that were sticking out from under her clavicle that receded. Um, so, but I always say it should be nutrition should be in addition to your cancer treatment because it's not the treatment, but it's, it's something that you can do, uh, something you can use to optimize your body's ability to fight back. Thank you very much for that doctor. Uh, our next question is coming from Deborah. Deborah, please state where you're from and ask your question. Hi, yeah, I just unmuted, sorry. Uh, it's Debbie and I'm from uh, Massachusetts. Hi, Debbie. And my question is um, surrounding um, the, the raw vegetables that you um, suggest and uh, especially the um, broccoli, kale, cauliflower. For someone who has... Um, thyroid issues because it, they're constantly saying you have to cook them or steam them or do something. And I, I don't have an autoimmune disease, but I'm trying to embrace this lifestyle so I don't get anything. Um, but I already had thyroid, you know, thyroid issues coming in and I, I have not been brave to try to get off the thyroid medicine yet, but I've been thinking more about it, but I know it's a bit of a process because I've been on for like over 10 years. So I don't know if you've treated people and that, that eating those raw vegetables didn't really affect their thyroid in the medicine they were on or, or just what are your thoughts on that? Cause it's a bit contradictory. I won't tell you thoughts. I'll tell you results. Okay. So first of all, uh, Debbie, do you have Hashimoto's? No, I have just a a slightly underactive. So So I'm just low, but it's not Hashimoto's. No. Okay. And did you, you saw when I was talking about Julie, how her thyroid came back to normal, right? She was eating all the cruciferous vegetables. I've helped people reverse Hashimoto's and Graves disease, which are both thyroid issues um, with the exact protocol. So the, the issue is, and unfortunately, there's just so much bad advice out there that's based off of theory rather than based off advice. Where the controversy came from is that cruciferous vegetables are known to mildly interfere with iodine absorption. Iodine is what's used to create thyroid hormone. So the fear is that if you have too much cruciferous vegetables, maybe you won't absorb enough thyroid or iodine, and then you won't have the thyroid hormone you need. Um, but the problem is now you're malnourished and now you're sicker. So I've had people use my full protocol, full cruciferous vegetables and reverse their autoimmune diseases, including thyroid diseases and have thyroid function come back up again. Um, and they were just fine. If you want to make sure that your iodine absorption is where it needs to be, then just make sure you take your iodine separate from your cruciferous veggies. So everybody who does not have thyroid disease should be getting about 150 micrograms a day. If you have low thyroid, you should be getting about 300 micrograms of iodine a day. And that's for your thyroid and for your brain function. 
So you can always have a supplement or something that you take separate from your meals, and then you don't even have to worry about it, but it's still, you need it for the health benefits. And we have had great results doing that. Thank you, doctor. Um, oh, one other thing, one other thing for Debbie, uh, don't just stop thyroid hormone. Okay. Your body needs thyroid hormone for all the different organ functions. And it always scares me when people just stop that. If you don't need it anymore, that's great. So if your thyroid function comes back up and you don't need it anymore, then that's awesome. But if you do need it, then it's important. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So um, besides diet inadequacies in, in diet, um, what are other causes for immune uh, autoimmune diseases? So it's complex. You know, people like to think of disease like a light switch. And oftentimes, you know, I spend 75 minutes in my appointments with people. I really get to know them and, and I want to hear everybody's health story. And oftentimes they'll say like this day, I woke up and I had pain. This day I woke up, I couldn't breathe. And it's really not the case. So, you know, we have our genetics for different diseases, whether it's heart disease, diabetes, autoimmune disease, and then we have to trigger those genes, right? And what I found is it's more like a, a storm than it is a switch. So, you know, in a storm, you've got the elevation, the precipitation, the temperature, right? All these things factor in to create that specific type of storm. Same with autoimmune. And so what I found to be the different parts of the storm are definitely nutrition or malnutrition or poor nutrition, but also stress, sleep, and emotional trauma. People with emotional trauma and depression and anxiety have much higher rates than the general population and having inflammatory illnesses, including autoimmune diseases. And it's why mood is so much a part of what I teach people. One, it helps people stay motivated, right? If you're depressed or anxious, and you're using food to comfort yourself, you're never going to get healthy. But if I can get people happy, they actually heal faster as well because the moods themselves create inflammation, the negative moods. Great. Thank you so much. Our next question is coming from Bin Wu. Bin Wu, please state where you're from and ask your question. Yeah. Hello. Thank you. You give a great talk. Um, uh, my question is, uh, um, do you suggest that your patient to eat the almonds or other nuts besides the, um, the flax seed or the chia seed? Any other nuts? Yeah. So, Thanks for the question. Uh, when you are healthy, nuts are perfectly fine. I use things like cashews and almonds for my dressings and sauces and things. They have a lot of nutrition in them, especially when they're raw. Um, during, if, if somebody's very sick and they're trying to heal as quickly as possible, reverse that disease and get their inflammation down, then during that time period where we're rapidly trying to reverse disease, I don't recommend the other nuts or seeds just because their ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is still very skewed in the sixth direction. Now, remember I said that a healthy ratio could be nine to one and, and most nuts and seeds are within that safety range. But if your six is up to here and your three is down here, then adding nuts and seeds really is not helping you do this, which is what we're trying to do. So if you are you know, really trying to reverse the process, get healthy as quickly as possible, then no, stick to the flax and chia, flax oil, things like that, and get yourself healthy first. For a healthy person, they're actually great. They're satisfying. They do not cause things like weight gain. Um, and, uh, and they have a lot of good nutrition in them. Thank you, doctor. Um, what do you eat for lunch and for dinner? <laughs> okay. And, so, breakfast, and for breakfast, that matter, I guess. What do you well, eat? I mean, as a healthy person that's been in uh, disease free for 18 years. Okay. So uh, maintenance is a lot easier than, than getting healthy. Uh, so in general, I eat a high raw diet. I have found the energy and recovery and disease resistance are just superior. And I love it. I love how it feels. So for me, I usually do, um, raw until dinner most days. So while I'm working, I'm just slurping down my smoothies and, and, uh, drinking my water and feeling good on that. Uh, if I have a break, I might grab some Ezekiel bread, which is like a sprouted bread and throw some avocado on it or something. But for the most part, I, I have my smoothies during the day. And then at dinner time, I have a huge salad as my main course. And this is my whole family, my, my kids, my husband, um, we have a huge salad as our main course, and then we'll have a side of something cooked. So, um, usually it's easy, like something in the instant pot, like soup or quinoa or beans or something, but that's kind of the, uh, the, the taste and comfort, but it's not, uh, it's not the, the star of the show as it were. Now, um, being healthy, you can tolerate 
inflammation here and there. So uh, I know a lot of folks uh, will come on and teach and say like, never can you have anything inflammatory ever again. And then they're secretly eating impossible burgers and hoping, you know, no one finds out kind of thing. Like, uh, you know, you don't have to do that. If you are healthy, you can occasionally, I'm not saying the teacher secretly do it. I'm saying the students, <laughs> but you can occasionally have something inflammatory if you're healthy, which I do. I got to say when I was visiting my family, uh, the, that side of the family has not uh, gone all in on, on what I teach, like, like the other side has. Uh, and so the whole time I was there, it was like bagels with almond cream cheese and like Chinese food, tofu and broccoli. So it was oils and dry. I just couldn't wait to have my smoothie when I got home, like nourish me. Um, but I'm not worried. I'm not going to get lupus because I spent a couple of days eating vegan junk. You know what I mean? Because my body is nourished. I have been disease free for 18 years from everything. Like I don't get colds. I don't get, uh, I don't get sick. Um, so uh, if you are healthy, you can tolerate a bit junk here and there. Just don't make it the star of the show on the daily basis. You eat for yourselves. And I taught my kids that you feed yourselves first. So they've been drinking smoothies since they were in their bottles. Um, and, uh, so that's our breakfast always. And usually it's my lunch. Their lunch is like Ezekiel bread and avocados and like six, seven fruits, whatever they can fit into their bag to go to school. And then again, dinner is big salad and something. And then on the weekend, we might have one day that we might go to a restaurant and eat what I call, I call it recreational eating because it's to get high, right? Like a recreational drug, you know, it's not good for you. Uh, it's got oil, whatever, but if you're healthy, you can tolerate that sometimes. So. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Yeah. Our next question is coming from Judy. Judy, please state where you're from and ask your question. Hi, I'm from Pennsylvania. Thanks, Dr. Goldner. Um, I am underweight, uh, plant-based, and I have a history of brain nodes in my hands and thyroid nodules. My thyroid um, tests are normal, um, but I don't do well on just morning smoothies, like just liquid because GI issues and things like that. So I feel like I do need a little bit more substance and being underweight. So I was just wondering, um, what are your thoughts on, um, do you consider Raynaud's, uh, primary Raynaud's, a um, autoimmune? And what are your thoughts on just like things like oatmeal for breakfast? Okay. Well, first I have to know where in Pennsylvania are you from? Uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Oh, I went to Temple Medical School. Oh, great. Yeah. So know the area very well. Um, went to uh, Central Bucks High School in Doylestown. Uh, Pennsylvania, which is north of the city. Anyway, um, so done really well with things like rehearsing Ray nodes. Uh, tell me, uh, Judy, what's your height and weight? Can I know so I can see what um, you mean by? Yeah, I mean, I'm about 108. Sorry, sorry. I'm about 108.54. Okay. I think you're doing okay, actually. Um, but uh, okay. So I have osteoporosis too. I have osteoporosis too. So I didn't want to, you know, go too loud. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm saying that I disagree with a lot of what people call underweight. You might, I don't know if you can tell from looking at my video, I'm a skinny person. Uh, and what I have found in my work is that people who get healthy rapidly also tend to have low body fat. Uh, that it's a it's a thing. So I think that our culture has made people uh, blind to what healthy even looks like anymore. You know, we've mutated what we think healthy is supposed to be and people want to have curves and all that stuff. And uh, I find it's not necessarily healthy. So I think the focus on weight, <clears throat> it used to be, gosh, 10 years ago, everybody just wanted to be skinny. That was the focus. Now in the past couple of years, my husband and I are seeing people who are afraid of being skinny and instead they want to be bigger. And that I can't help people with, you know, you're not going to getting fatter doesn't happen on my, on my protocol. Um, even if you eat 10 avocados a day, um, it doesn't make you fatter. So my focus is on health. If you've got Raynaud's, if you are sick, then you need to get the inflammation down. So oats for breakfast, that's not going to do it. That's a weight gain food. Yes, but it's not going to give you health. So if your goal is to get healthy, then you need to get the hypernourishment in. If you want to just add hypernourishment, then have your oatmeal first and then have it and then see how you do. And if you get better, you don't need to change anything else. But if you need to get more aggressive, you might have to add more of these hypernourishing foods and have less of the other ones, especially during the healing process. Uh, you don't have to do smoothies though. 
you can eat it. I mean, when I did this, I didn't know about smoothies back when I got healthy all those years ago. So I ate a couple pounds of broccoli and cauliflower a day, just dipping in guacamole all day. I mean, I had jaws of steel, um, but I just got it done. I'm a get it done kind of person. You know, if you say eat this much or whatever, I just, okay, fine. Like I'll just do whatever it takes. Um, and, uh, you know, being chronically ill for so much of my life made me really tough. So if I want to do something, I get it done whatever way possible. Um, so the smoothies are easier and I definitely prefer it. And I don't have to have broccoli in my teeth when I'm giving a talk, uh, but whatever works for you. So if the smoothies don't work for you, then don't do the smoothies or some people will make the smoothies really thick. So it's like a, you know, like, and then less water, more chia or whatever. And then they spoon it. Okay. Right. Or eat the food, put it into a salad, dip broccoli and guacamole. There's so many different ways. So what you want to get focused on is how do I get it in? rather than why, why you won't be able to. And there's usually a solution. If people are really struggling with their gut, usually that's when an appointment is better with me. So I can really get to know your health problems, your gut problems, and design a program that will get you to the results you want, considering your different issues. The thing about the gut issues, and they're so prevalent, is that you know the gut issues are a result of your previous diet. And oftentimes they prevent you from embracing the diet you need to heal. So I do help people who have a lot of gut issues focus on that. Um, and gut health gets better quickly too. I've helped so many people reverse ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, uh, very, very quickly, often in a month's time using my most aggressive nutrition protocols. And even people with, uh, you know, irritable bowel who are told they need low FODMAP. Nope. We're doing all raw and we're giving them all the fiber and they get better. It's just that sometimes depending on the gut issue, we might have to go slower or, you know, even use supplements sometimes, which I don't typically use unless there's a gut issue to help the gut take in the food you need to heal. But that might, again, without knowing you well, it's hard for me to, to say how you would need to do that. Thank you for that answer, doctor. Uh, another question should, uh, so we just, uh, I, I was just talking to Brian Clement, who um, believes that fruit, and, and he basically uh, you know, practices this at Hippocrates, he believes that fruit can be uh, detrimental to our health with various ailments. What are your thoughts on the, the health of fruit, whether or not it should be avoided? Um, he believes that it can feed yeast, mold, cancer, that type of thing. I know Brian Clement and Hippocrates Institute of School because uh, it used to be next door to where my mom used to live in West Palm Beach. And they have a raw buffet that if you pay 20 bucks, you can eat at their buffet where they serve their patients. So I've actually gone there because where do you get a raw vegan buffet? You know, <laughs> so um and, you know, so I, I know he's helping a lot of people there. So, uh, I talked to people there at his at his place. Um, what I found, I do not think that there is some uh, harmful effect to fruit. If you're a healthy person and you want to eat fruit, it, it, it's fine. What I have found, though, is that fruit-based diets don't create the rapid disease reversal that I'm able to do with the vegetable-based diet. So on my protocol, fruit is not required. It's the vegetables that are required. People can eat some fruit, but we keep it to like 25%. And again, this is on the aggressive, like in my rapid recovery programs, where we are trying to hyper nourish you to get the fastest healing possible. So there's no room for the fruit. Like we got to get the veggies in there. We got to get the omega threes in there. We got to get the water in there. So it works without any fruit at all, actually the fastest. And it still works with a little bit of fruit. But once people get their fruit up higher, the results kind of stall out. Why that is, I won't, I won't say because then we venture into the world of theory. I live the world of results. So is it because of some other issue like he mentioned? I you would have to test it to find out. For me, I'm just getting people better every day as fast as possible. So what I found is once people, if they're in my rapid programs, then having uh, too much fruit can slow down the process. But general health, I have not seen fruit be a problem at all for people who are healthy. Like I said, my kids eat enormous amounts of fruit. Um, I don't personally, just because I don't like it. I'm one of those weirdos that doesn't like sweet things. So I would rather eat broccoli than eat an apple. Weird, I know. Um, but in general, I have not seen it be a problem. And think of it this way. <clears throat> if people would eat just fruit instead of chips uh, and where you are in the world and pretzels and all those things, there wouldn't be so many health problems. So fruits are, you know, they've got vitamins, they've got some hydration in them, um, small amounts of sugar, but consumed with the fiber seems to be fine for people for general health. Um, but when you compare them to things like vegetables, they don't have the minerals, they don't have the high level of vitamins. So for me, in terms of cellular repair, the vegetables are definitely first place. 
Great. Thank you so much. And let's see here. I believe that was Judy. Okay. Um, so I don't know if I just asked Beth. I don't know. Uh, Beth, did you ask your question or if not? No, I have it. not. Okay. I please get away from it and ask your question. Okay. I'm retired living in Indiana. I'm a retired RN. I love the health and wellness end of things. Um, although I have a relatively healthy BMI at 23.4, for years I had this water balloon feeling in my stomach. When I just try to walk into the grocery store, I could feel it sloshing and fighting me. So I've, I've eaten healthy and done everything, but I introduced your green smoothie. I had to take the fruit out and a lot of the chia out, but I can do packed greens with your water fill protocol, a packet of raw stevia per Brian. Um, Man, within less than a week, this water balloon is shrinking. And so I am interested. I thank you guys so much. But, you know, it's tough when you're relatively healthy because everything's picky. Your body, you have to really zoom in on, okay, exactly what do you need to do. But what my question is, what in the heck is happening to shrink this water balloon feeling? I do have slightly elevated triglycerides. Is it is it an acid alkaline balance? Is it digestive enzymes? Are my trigs going down? It's wonderful, but what's happening? I know that I have no idea what's going on with you because I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because unfortunately, water balloon is not like a medical diagnosis where I go, ah, it's this thing. So not sure, but I'm glad it's helping you. I personally, I am not a fan of things like stevia. I'd rather you use the fruit for flavor. Um, but, uh, and if you get too bloated or sloshy with, uh, with the seeds, a couple of tablespoons of cold pressed flax oil, you're gonna get all the benefits without extra bloat. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what that feeling was. Cause it's still, it's maybe if I had my full 75 minutes, I could like hear it and know what it is but I'm glad whatever it is that you're feeling so much better. Uh, if you have high triglycerides, those omega-3s are going to be really important for you. People have gotten it into their heads that like any fats will either make me fatter or make my cholesterol go up. Where what we've seen is if people do our protocol, they can have as many avocados as they want. They can have super high omega-3s and cholesterol just drops. And that's been upheld by even studies that have shown the same thing that avocados cause cholesterol to drop like almost uh, another uh, 50% more than people who eat no fat at all. So, um, so make sure that you're getting that into your diet as well. And you should see those come down too, but yeah, whatever it is, I'm glad you're not sloshing. I mean, that's good. <laughs> Great. Um, how many people have you treated in your practice and of those people, what percentage of those people have gotten better following your protocol? How many people? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. Uh, in rapid recovery alone, it's been over a thousand, um, just in my group. Uh, and then I see people all day, every day. This is what I do is just see people, thousands of people. If people follow the protocol, they get healthier. That's the case. It's not like one of those things where like some people get better and some people get worse and just see there's no biodiversity. Remember, this came from my husband's original research, which is there must be an optimum diet for humans. We've forgotten what our species eats. We figured out what our species eats, you know, if we were in nature, you know, and for, and, you know, religious people, Garden of Eden, evolutionists, we we're, you know, hunting, gathering out in the, in the, in the woods, right? Like how often would people be able to actually hunt? What were you eating most of the time? Whatever was growing right there. Ooh, apple tree. Ooh, you know, kale, right? You were just, what would we be eating? We'd be eating right from nature. We don't have to mutate it or change it in order to get it to be better. Every time humans try to make things better, we make it worse, right? My mom's doctor told her that, that the formula would be better than breastfeeding. Scientists have figured it out. No, no. What we found out, and I think what you're probably hearing at this conference is nature had it right. And humans just got so smart, we started believing our own stuff. And we keep trying to make things better, and it just doesn't seem to work that way. <laughs> so. Thank you. Our, our next question is coming from David. David, please state where you're from and ask your question. Yes, I'm David. I'm from the Washington, D.C. area. And I was curious, you said one tablespoon of chia and flax was enough. I was curious to know how many tablespoons you generally would recommend. And you mentioned 96 ounces of water. Would juicing count towards those 96 um, ounces? And finally, is there any downside to taking algae oil directly? Okay. Omega-3s. <laughs> um, okay. 
So the uh, 96 ounce, okay, so the first one was the, the flax seeds. Um, so again, a handful or your size hand, David, your hand, uh, if you're healthy is a good amount. Um, if you're trying to do recovery, half a cup, which is eight tablespoons. Um, juicing, I don't count juices towards water because it's untested. And again, I'm results oriented. So is it possible that ju fresh pressed juices will give you the same benefit of water? Highly likely, highly possible, but I haven't tested it. What I know is the water works. And so I stick with the water. Um, and what was the final one? So my brain is still- Was there any downside to taking uh, algae oh, oil directly to your omega-3s? No, uh, unless you have to look at the ingredients. The, unfortunately, what it, you know, there's a lot of people trying to make money off of, you know, we have the research and then companies jump in to make money off of the research, right? So it's like, oh, omega-3s help people. We'll make pills. Why get flax seeds at $1.29 a pound when you can buy supplements for $50, right? Uh, so if it's pure algae oil, there's good benefit to it. The problem is uh, that a lot of them, because it's a fat, it needs to be dissolved in a fat to keep it stable. And they usually will use sunflower oil or safflower oil to dissolve it, which means you're getting a super high dose of omega-6 in the, in the fluid that your omega-3s are dissolved in, and you're not going to get the same benefit. So I've seen that in a lot of supplements. So just be careful with your supplement. And if it doesn't have those other ingredients, then it should be fine. Great. And uh, talking about the flax seed and the chia seed, um, how about whole versus ground? Does that matter? You need to grind it when you're about to use it, but you don't want to use pre-ground because omega-3 fatty acids will oxidize rapidly when exposed to air or heat. So if it's been pre-ground and then bagged, it's been exposed to air. So there's no harm in it, but you're not going to get the benefits of the omega-3s. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, our next question is coming from Vivian. Vivian, please state where you're from and ask your question. Hi, I'm from Ohio. I wanted to know what you eat in restaurants when you travel and don't have access to a smoothie maker or a grocery. Okay, so Vivian, um, so this really depends also again on what your health goals are, right? For me, if I'm just gonna be traveling for a day, I'm just gonna do the best I can at the restaurant. Um, and uh, sometimes it might even just be something vegan. But again, I have no health goals at this point. If you're trying to be healthy um, or, or you're doing a healing program, then you just need to plan. So one, you can bring a blender with you. I've also, if I'm only gonna stay somewhere one day, I've used the bartender because the bartender has a blender. So I'll tell the bartender, can you get spinach from the kitchen? Uh, and some, uh, cause spinach is cruciferous adjacent. It'll work too for health. So I'll be like, yeah, grab some spinach, some kale, uh, any kind of frozen fruit, bananas you have. And uh, will you blend that up for me? And they'll do it. They'll do it uh, for you. Um, but I usually stay places where, like wherever I'm staying, most of the time when you're at a hotel, you're near a supermarket. So for example, when I was, uh, I did the keynote for Midland, Texas's uh, big health conference that just happened in August. And they put us in a hotel that was right across the shopping center from a uh, supermarket. And actually my husband, or not my husband, my, my son taught as well. My, my 14 year old son has his own book, uh, 50 Comebacks for Vegan Kids. And he, he introduced me, it was pretty cool. So, we, so I was there with my husband and my son. And so what we did, is we went to the supermarket and we bought bags of broccoli, cauliflower, um, some salad bags, guacamole, pico de gallo, which is raw salsa. Um, and then we bought some fruits and then some other like vegetable crudite and we brought them all back. And so we just munched and crunched. So my husband, it had a little kitchenette. So my husband took like one of the big pots uh, and he put in all the salad ingredients, guacamole and salsa. And we ate that right fresh out of there. Um, and then we had all the different broccolis and fruits and guacamole and stuff to eat during the day. So it's really easy uh, to just go to the supermarket and eat through it if you don't want to go ahead and blend it. And then at restaurants, if I like there was a time where my husband, I taught a, at a hotel for a week. And so we just told the restaurant staff at the hotel what we needed. And every day they brought us out these giant salads with a side of guacamole and a side of salsa. And the first time they brought it out, it was like this big. And we sent it back three times until it got to the size we needed. And then after that, they knew what we wanted. And every time we walked in, we'd wave at them and they'd bring us our salad. So you really have to be willing to ask, plan. And if all else fails, just go to the supermarket and grab some chopped up veggies and guac and, and just chew it down. Thank you, doctor. So mm -hmm. what do you say to, um, to people who say that smoothies are unhealthy because they concentrate sugar and destroy nutrients? I'd say that they haven't actually tested smoothies. I mean, 
everybody within a mouth has an opinion. It doesn't mean it's valid. As I said, I've worked with thousands of people in reversing disease using the smoothies. So obviously they work or I wouldn't, nobody would know who I was, right? Because they'd be like, I tried that, I got sick and then I would have disappeared. Um, the reason that you know me and you see me is because they work amazingly well. And it's a whole lot easier to drink them down than to chew it down. And, uh, and people get healthier every day. So anyone who says that smoothies aren't good for you, you already know they haven't tested them. I tested them, right? Uh, and if they ask, I would love for you to ask them, oh, did you test smoothies versus non-smoothies? And, and, and what was in those smoothies? Were they all fruit? Were they made like the goodbye lupus protocol? People like to talk, people like to have opinions, but you have to be careful that you don't go with people's opinions, you go with the results. Excellent. Thank you, doctor. Mm -hmm. Our next question is coming from Paul. Paul, please state where you're from and ask your question. Hi, how are you? I'm Paul from Queens, New York. Oh, that's uh, where my family's from, uh, Forest Hills and Rego Park. Yeah, I'm about 10 minutes from there. Um, in your presentation, you spoke about a girl who had cervical dysplasia and she had the HPV virus and she overcame yes. it. And I was just wondering about other microbes that people might have candida, yeast infections, bad bacteria. Does this diet help eliminate it or do you also have to take supplements to get deal with all these? Yeah, it depends. Yeah. So Paul, you know, in general, again, we're optimizing immune function. So that helps with reversing disease, but that also helps in preventing, right? And, and optimizing resistance to infection. So for example, my kids have eaten this way their whole lives, lucky guys. So one, they don't have food addictions. Two, they don't get sick. So both of my boys have not had a cold since they were two. That was it. They had a cold at two and it's never, and one's 10 and one's 14. They're in public school in Texas where there's no masks or anything. They haven't gotten COVID. You know, they are just like, so think about what you can do with your immune system when you're nourished properly, right? It's pretty awesome. So uh, I've had multiple people now who've reversed cervical dysplasia um, and, and also things like, so which we have um, HPV, which is a virus, uh, herpes, people who'd had chronic outbreaks either in their uh, mouth, uh, in their mouth, uh, on their lips, or even uh, on their genitals who have been remission for many, many years that all happened when they changed to do this diet. Um, and of course, with fighting infections. Now, there are some infections that you might need help with medically. Again, I'm not anti-medicine. I'm just about doing everything you can to minimize your need for medicine, right? Um, so with candida, it just depends because the thing about candida, and I have some videos on YouTube where I teach the science of how this works, but with something like candida, once it's rooted in you and once it's living there, if you don't do anything to kill it off, then it's, it's kind of hard to have it be replaced by the healthy bacteria that you want to live there instead. So if someone has really bad infections, then I usually recommend that you do treat the candida while you're using the right probiotics so that you can restore the natural ba uh, balance to yourself. Because we do have a little bit of a yeast that should live there, but if they've taken over, then there's no room for the bacteria to stick to where they need to stick to. So. Great, thank you very much. Um, so we have about one minute. So I'll, I'll ask, uh, I'll ask well, how Vivian has one more question. If she can keep it brief and maybe keep that uh, the answer brief, that'd be great. Me, brief? You don't know who you're talking <laughs> to, come on. <laughs> All right, Vivian, uh, if you've asked a question, just if you can make it real, real fast and we'll just get that done and we'll, we'll wrap up. Absolutely. I was just wondering if variety matters. That's ah, great. great question, Vivian. So what I have found is consistency matters way more than variety. So if you're trying to get every kind of nutrient from multiple different things, then yes. But if you take the food that has the highest dosage of everything, you don't really need that, right? So I've been doing the same green smoothies for many, many, many years using power greens I get from Costco and it has kale and spinach and chard and all that stuff. And we've been drinking the same ones forever and it just still works for us. And I don't eat the rainbow. I just don't, I don't need to eat the rainbow and I have superior health inside and out. You know, um, I know this conference, there might be people who have beliefs about getting your regular medical testing and stuff like that. I do all the medical testing. I don't ever want to go back to being a sick person. So I just have my colonoscopy. I just have my mammogram. I am 46 years old. Uh, and my, my GI doctor clapped for me after my colonoscopy. He clapped and said, you have the insides of a teenager. I, whatever you're doing works, right? Have my mammography. They said, you, you look young. Like this is, it doesn't seem like you should be the age that you are. And I, and I say this to say, like, I have been doing the same food every day for almost 18 years 
and I'm extremely healthy. So I think we oversell this. People love to overcomplicate things. If you like the rainbow, enjoy it. But if you just want to know what do I need to do to get the nutrients I need to optimize my health, get in your cruciferous vegetables, get in your flax and chia, get in your water, and then eat other plants for all the rest of the stuff, whichever ones you like best, and you'll do great. Great. Thank you so much, doctor. Uh, that was a really powerful presentation as well as uh, a great Q&A. We're going to open up the uh, the mics for everybody, so uh, unmute them so uh, they can show their appreciation too, and you'll hear a whole time. We love you. Thank 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 you. you. Stay tuned for our next awesome i love that last year i love that last year too it was the coolest thing i love that thank you all of you for all of your attention and for um and and for being here to do this for yourself and remember the kiddos do it for everybody else too and i will be back online for i don't know if your conference is going all day i don't want to compete with your conference but every wednesday at 12 30 you can find me on youtube instagram facebook and i do q and a's and i'm just here to serve so hopefully this changed your life and it's going to help you get well Great. Thanks that's for 12, having me. That's 1230 Pacific, correct? Three Pacific. Eastern time. Great. Thank you so, so you're much. You're in Eastern, 330 Eastern. Great. Thank you so much, doctor. Mm -hmm.